Hello all of you this is Shivangi Agarwal from Actuators Educational Institute today i'll be giving you a short overview of what cp2 and cp3 is all about and also explaining you how we will conduct the classes for the same so cp2 which is modeling practice uh, this paper is a two day examination on day 1 we have a model that we have to build from scratch so you get a um, background which you have to read understand and build a model on a excel spreadsheet from scratch you have to explain the entire process that you have done in ms word which we call it as audit trail on day 2 again you will get a background material which will be different from day 1 um and there will be a model which will be half done by your colleague you have to just complete the rest of the parts of the model and explain the entire thing with a proper report that we call it as a summary report on ms word so both day it's a 100 mark paper and they will take an average of uh, both days marks and accordingly um, they will consider your final total marks for cp2 um again it's a 3 hours 15 minutes paper 5 minutes they give you for the uploading so 3 hours 20 minutes for ifoa for iei it is 3 hours 15 minutes it's excel plus word based examination for cp3 which is communication practice so this is a ms word paper 100 marks one day examination and it's a 3 hours examination 3 hours 5 minutes for ifoa and 3 hours for iei again now there is some advanced scenario material that you receive 3 days before your examination in case of ifoa in case of iei there is no advanced material whatever is required is given at the time of examination now let's quickly understand the similarities between the two so if i just quickly mention the total recommended study hours for cp2 it's 120 plus hours of study recommendation and for cp3 somewhere it's again 60 to 70 plus hours of recommended study studying hours now um what is the similarity here when you build the model you have to explain the same model as to how you have built the model what functions you have used uh, in which cells you have written what data you have used what assumptions you have made what data validations you have carried out everything in the audit trail so again somewhere around 2000 to 2300 words we write an ms word in the uh, second paper paper 2 you complete the model which is already half done and you build a summary report now summary report is somewhere again around 2700 2800 that, that's an approximate number of word count uh, approximately 8 to 9 pages that we have to write and it's a good uh you know a uh, proper communication that needs to be built up wherein you are writing the background overview of the model um what data you have used have you validated your data set uh what assumptions you have made um then how uh, you have carried out how you have built the model just giving an overview of it then explaining uh the results that you have got in your model in form of charts tables explaining why the results are like that whether it's reasonable or not and then giving the next steps like moving forward how can you improve your model and what are the steps you can take moving forward so it's a complete communication in the paper 2 we mostly have 80% of ms word and 20% of excel on day 2 on day 1 again it's somewhere around um 40% of model and 60% of ms word which is audit trail so on both the days the more weightage is given to the part of ms word which is uh, again communicating your model which you have built so it's not only about building the correct model it's also about communicating the same even though your model is different from your solution uh from of ifa or ia still you can clear your examination because it's all about how you are representing the same
same uh, applies for cp3 here we only deal in communicating but here the communication is a little different here majorly we are communicating to a non technical audience it can be anyone it can be either the audience the general public it can be a policy holder it can be a group of trustees of a company who do not have um, good actuarial knowledge as such or it can be shareholders or it can be your senior manager who actually has a good technical background it can be your colleague it can be your junior it can be uh, a press release that you have to put forward to common people so uh, it can be government it can be um, anyone so here generally we are communicating to a non technical audience so there is a word called jargons there are some actuarial terminologies which we have which we cannot directly use in this paper you have to simplify them or you can simply ignore it so it's more about this paper is more about filtering out of information because you will be getting an advanced material in case of ifa in case of ia you don't get that however there is still a background given to you and again you will be getting a question paper with again an you know extension of the background so there is a lot of information given to you but at the same time you need to just produce a communication that should not be of more than uh, 700 800 words it should be within that approximately so it's all about filtering of the information what information you are including whether it's irrelevant or not um relevant or not uh, whether you are using any jargons or not uh, how are you uh, explaining certain key aims key uh, aims with the audience wants you to explain so it's all about that and we generally say that 60 plus hours is required now how to prepare for these papers so if you look at the study material it's not uh, very comprehensive uh, just by reading the study material you will not be able to clear these two examinations these two examinations are all about practicing so you need to practice all the past released papers be it ifoa or ia and you need to understand where you can score the marks because you you will ask anyone who has cleared cp2 or cp3 most of them not score a very great marks like above 90 generally the marks uh, scored is somewhere around 60 to 75 this is the general range which the students score and uh, clear their examination people who fail these papers uh, are ones who have not practiced obviously properly or someone who is failing even after practicing maybe by a margin of 4 5 marks these are the students who have not understood the intricacies as in what are the crisp points that they are asking for where do you get that one mark where do you get get that two mark because to score marks in the content portion is difficult when we consider cp3 paper but there are a few small things small places where definitely full marks is possible same applies for cp2 here your model can never be 100% same as the solution provided by ifoa when you solve the past papers it's all about the audit trail and summary how you approach these particular aspects that will actually help you to clear your examination so there are a lot of intricate parts which you have to delve upon to understand where you can clear this paper in your first attempt because yes there are students who cannot clear these two papers even in their first attempt there are students taking second and third attempt for papers like cp2 taking their fourth or third attempt for cp3 as well so yes it's easy but at the same time you need to practice and at the same time you need to know whether you are practicing in the correct direction or not so coming to that what we do in our classes is that we build we help you build one model from scratch for cp3 there is one paper that we help you to build from scratch so understand each and every aspect that entire 100 marks is broken down into small small parts where you can get the actual marks in where you can get that one mark where you can get that two marks or so on and so forth similarly for cp2 since there are paper 1 and paper 2 we help you build these two papers from scratch that is model plus audit trail model plus summary after this is done in class and now you are aware of each every little part of the paper 
next we practice all the past papers in class so i will ask you during the week to solve one particular past paper and during the weekend when we'll have the classes we'll be discussing the same so i will be discussing where you have gone wrong where you can improve which points you should focus more upon because i have seen students focusing more on the auditory or uh, on the model but instead they should focus more on these parts so which parts you should focus on and you can score full marks over there so that you can clear this paper in your first attempt these are the few things that i discuss in my classes which is extremely important that you attend the live lectures we have the live lectures only on the weekends that is on the saturdays or sundays mostly we'll be having it on um saturday mornings or sunday mornings then i take a complete mock examination wherein i will be giving you a complete feedback back from each aspect as in where you are scoring the marks where you are not not how can you improve that is happening after you have practiced a few papers so that you can again work upon these things and again we'll be discussing the same in the class generally we take one full mock examination for both these papers but yes if time permits we also take two full mock examination that depends on do we have time in that particular attempt or not so here it's all about uh attending the live lectures 120 plus hours when i'm saying this includes the study lectures and self practice so if you are a student who is working i think every day giving 2 hours is more than enough if you are giving these two papers together on the weekends you have to sit down and you have to practice one paper entirely if you are solving cp2 then it will take you around 3 hours initially it will take you obviously 3 hours 30 minutes or might take you even 4 hours and similarly for cp3 somewhere around 3 3 and a half hours gradually you will get into the flow and you will be able to give the solve the papers within the time limit solving papers is the key to clearing these examinations but at the same time understanding where you are going wrong is also very important and that you need to discuss only with someone who is experienced in this paper maybe uh, experienced in um uh, checking these kind of papers it's extremely important that you get connected to these people so in my class i mostly talk about where we can score marks in what all the important aspects we should focus upon and uh, where you are making mistakes how you can improve those mistakes um how to tackle any difficult question if it comes in examination for example any difficult question comes up and you are not able to make the model out of it how to tackle the situation at that particular point of time what should be the time distribution during your examination since you have so many things to look into how to filter out information for cp3 paper um whatever how to find out the aims of the communication how to know whether whatever you are writing is relevant or not how to understand whether the words that you are using are actually a jargon for the audience or not because a word which is a jargon for one person can be a a uh, simple word for another person words like probability words like mortality these words might be a jargon for someone but it might be understandable to someone else so how to deal with this in case of cp3 you get two questions one question is the entire communication which is of 80 marks in case of ifa and 90 marks in case of ia rest 20 marks and 10 marks here are basically your reflective questions which reflects on the first part that is something which students ignore and that is something which i focus a lot in my class as well because there is the place you can actually also score marks in so all these different discussions we do in our live lectures which is extremely important for anyone to join and um, for further information you can contact us all the information will be given in the description box thank you so much